Amazing. So if a person has changed their lives in a way that they did not go back to those sins, good news to such people, may Allah make us from among them. But if a person fell back, Allah says, although we forgave you the first time, we're telling you, we will still forgive you the second and the third and the fourth. And as many times for as long as you're breathing, you're alive and you have not got to the point of gargara, meaning the angel of death has not started taking your soul away. There is still hope. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lovely turning point. My brothers and sisters, these are the verses of hope, the verses of mercy, the verses of kindness. But we have one major problem. The problem is human beings are not as merciful as Allah. Human beings at times are very unforgiving. They may never give you a second chance. In fact, they may judge you wrongly when you haven't even sinned. That is the test that Allah places in your lives and mine. And this is why when someone has wronged you as a human being, you are encouraged to overlook and forgive. Forgive and embrace. Wouldn't you like Allah for, for, to forgive you? In fact, it is addressed in the third person. Would they not like Allah to forgive them? So Allah is encouraging us to forgive others. And Allah is encouraging us to overlook. But that's not easy. When do I give a person a second chance? If someone has abused me, tortured me, someone has done something nasty, they've stolen my wealth, they've sworn at me, they have harmed me, they may have done something really disastrous. My brothers and sisters, it is your right not to forgive. It is your right not to forgive. But Allah strongly recommends you to forgive. Allah tells you in beautiful, powerful words, encouraging you on the highest level to say, forgive the person, find it in your heart to forgive them. So you may choose to forgive and embrace if that person is genuine and they are seeking forgiveness and you see that their attitude has changed completely. You may choose to forgive and embrace, which means you go back to how it used to be before, but you have a right not to do that. If the person is seeking your forgiveness, but you are wary about whether or not they are genuine, you're wary about whether or not they have changed their ways or habits. You can forgive them, but you don't need to embrace them because the two are different acts of worship. Subhanallah. I forgive someone, but because I don't want to be bitten by them again, I will stay away from them. There is nothing wrong with that. You can keep a safe distance in order to safeguard yourself from what has happened in the past. You would not be foolish, especially when the genuineness is not so manifest in the people or the person who is seeking your forgiveness. Then sometimes they may not seek your forgiveness and perhaps they may never have changed. You can still find it in your heart to forgive them, but you don't need to embrace them. If you do, obviously it will be something good. But if you don't, in order to protect yourself, it is not bad either. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So to forgive people and to tell yourself, Oh, I have forgiven this person for the sake of Allah, even though they may not have sought that forgiveness. That is something Allah asks you to do. Then we have another scenario where we say, I forgive this person, but I would like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show them that they were wrong to show them or perhaps to let them have a lesson so that they don't do it to others or so that others are protected from that. That is probably one of the lower levels when forgiving people. So you've forgiven them, released it from your heart, but you have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them a lesson. Subhanallah. It is also okay to do that, but it is something that is of a lower level. And the lowest level, which is also your right, is to say, I don't want to forgive this person. 
Allah tells us many times in the Quran, try to avoid that. Try to forgive them. Find it in your heart. Even if you're going to stay away from them, don't hold it in your heart. It probably has a greater burden within your heart and your shoulders than it has for them. So release it. Even if you're releasing it on the lowest level of release, but let it go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good understanding. My brothers and sisters, so do people deserve a second chance? I've just told you when it comes to the sins they commit between them and Allah, Allah will give them as many chances as they wish for as long as they are doing the right thing when seeking the forgiveness of Allah. A person said something wrong. They did something wrong. They deserve a second and a third chance when those are taken from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when they have wronged another human being, that human being may not forgive them. Now, in today's world, people commit sins. And sometimes these sins are made apparent to the rest of us. Remember, my brothers and sisters, as much as we gleefully sometimes enjoy to expose them and their sin, and we don't realize it was a sin committed between them and Allah, and if you were to expose those sins, perhaps Allah may expose you. If it was a sin between them and Allah, yes, we should talk about it in a positive way. Bearing in mind, these are our brothers and sisters in faith. They are our brothers and sisters in humanity. We're meant to reach out to them, not to make them suicidal, simply because the whole world has excommunicated them for a bad habit that they had or for something they did in their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are remorseful. If people are remorseful and they are seeking the forgiveness, you need to know if that was from the rights of Allah. Who are you as a human being to say that they will never ever be accepted again? May Allah forgive us. The term used nowadays is cancelled. Such and such a person is cancelled simply because they said or did something that may actually be forgivable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are we as human beings not to give a person a second chance? If we were taught by Allah never to give a person who faltered or wronged a second chance, none of us would ever have a second chance in life. So I'm advising you, my brothers and sisters, go easy on others. Allah will go easy on you. Remember, they are human. They suffer and struggle the consequences of your words, your actions way beyond their sin was forgiven by Allah. So be careful because now the sin is actually yours. We don't enjoy exposing people ever. If you're a true believer, you will never enjoy to expose people. Why are you exposing them? If they deserve to be exposed because of the evil that came from them, it's not because we enjoy it, but it is because we'd like to save others or perhaps teach people a lesson. So remember this, it's never the enjoyment. When people begin to enjoy exposing others, they are doing it for shaitan, not for Allah. But when people are exposing the little that they have to for the correct reasons, and they're not enjoying it at all, and it pains them, and they are still reaching out to those who have wronged in a positive way, stretching an arm of goodness and reconciliation to them, then they may well be doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the ability to do whatever we do for his sake, the sake of Allah. So bear in mind, my brothers and sisters, man is not ghafoor rahim He is not most forgiving, most merciful. That is Allah. Allah will give you many, many chances. Man will not give you many chances, unfortunately. But Allah encourages us because we are all human, never write off a person simply because they've done something wrong. Many times people serve a prison period or correctional services. They have served their sentence. We refuse to embrace them when they come out of that sentence. We think they don't deserve another chance. We treat them badly. Is that what Allah wants? Subhanallah. If you were to be excommunicated because of a sin you've committed, every single one of us would be excommunicated. Just because Allah has covered you does not mean you're innocent. It means 
you're equally guilty, but you're fortunate that Allah has not exposed you. So go easy on others and Allah will go easy on you. My brothers and sisters, those who have been released from the prisons, those who have come out from the correctional services, those who are serving time there, you are our brothers and our sisters. We stretch an arm of reconciliation with you. We will try our best to reintroduce you into community and society. Those of you, my brothers and sisters who have wronged and faulted, you are still our brothers and sisters. If you have wronged someone, make peace with them, seek forgiveness from them. They may not forgive you. But if you've wronged Allah, seek forgiveness from Allah. He will always forgive you and we will help reintroduce you into society in a way that will definitely be an example for humanity at large. We're human beings. We all falter. We all commit sins. Yes, I do know the magnitude of the crime also matters. It does. It takes longer for people who've committed major, major sins to be forgiven or to be reintroduced into society and community. But still, we are asked by Allah to give people another chance. To give people another chance. If Allah gives someone a chance, why is it that we won't? My brothers and sisters, I'd like to make a quick clarification about marriage. Nobody should use what I've said to blackmail a person who's being abused into remaining in a relationship when they are being abused to the degree that they cannot cope anymore. No, my brothers and sisters, remember it's the mercy of Allah. If a person really cannot manage in a relationship and they are struggling in it, they have the right to seek the termination of that marriage or that relationship. They have a right. So let's not usurp that right by telling them you have to bear with whatever we're doing against you or with whatever the circumstances are against you. That is false. You don't have to bear it all. If you cannot manage, you cannot cope. And if you are struggling, you have the right to seek help. And if need be, you may terminate that relationship. Remember that. But my brothers and sisters, let's have mercy on those who've come back, those who've repented when it comes to other sins. There are people who sometimes their sins are exposed to us and we were not supposed to have known those sins. Would we look at them with the eye of skepticism for the rest of our lives when we know that they sought forgiveness or they are repenting? That's what I'm talking about. We need to make sure, like I said, and this is the third time I'm saying it, go easy on them and Allah will go easy on you. My brothers and sisters, may Allah give us chance after chance. We are human. But let's not abuse that and let's not misinterpret the term hope in the mercy of Allah. But my brothers and sisters, let's also learn to be merciful to others. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam says, La yarhamillahu man la yarhamin nas. Allah does not have mercy upon those who don't have mercy on other people. May Allah never expose us. I promise you, if we had to sin, in fact, if, if our sins were exposed to others, we probably would be in a worse position than those whose sins have been exposed to us. So let's not play the nobleman by trying to belittle others instead of helping them. And we need to strike the balance between helping them, dealing with the matter, ensuring that that is not done again. And at the same time, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you.